Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good.
worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. For who you are. everyone let's stand to our feet and give God a hand clap of praise and come on stand if you got two feet if you ain't got two feet you ain't got to stand up if you're home on YouTube if you're home um, on Facebook you got two feet stand up give God so come on give God another hand clap of praise man not for me but for him he's worthy to be praised I mean they were saying we worship you for who you are is God does God mean does God do anything for anybody just raise your right hand if he's done anything for you then raise your other hand. Let's give God some praise here this morning. Y'all look quiet. Weather's beautiful. The Lord is good. He's good all the time. And we just want to give him a praise. But before we get started, we'll be remiss, Brother Griggs. If you could stand to your feet, you all know what happened in Brooklyn, New York on that horrific weekend on last week. We want to pause here in our service. Brother Griggs, if you could give me that screen of those individuals who lost their lives in Brooklyn, New York. I'm going to wait and give him a moment to grab that screen. Grab that picture, Brother brother Griggs. If you can grab that picture, you guys may have read in the paper. There you go. Thank you. I just want to do a moment. You don't mind, do you? God takes time out for stuff like this, and we should. The church always takes time out, Minister Marcus, because those individuals lost their lives, and, and we're going to pray for them. And we're going to pray for the person who did it. Y'all getting quiet on me, ain't you? <laughs> the Bible says, love your enemies. Those who despitefully use you, persecute you, speak evil man against you. So we're going to lift up just a moment of prayer for those of our family and our friends, other believers that are in Buffalo, I'm sorry, Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. Pastor got a little head cold. Buffalo, New York. It's a moment of as Brother Mark prays for them. And let's all pray too. Father God, even now, lift up you right now, God, in this sad moment, God, in our world, in our country. But God, you said in your word, God, that there would be times, and that we're in the end times, where people be lover of themselves, evil, meanful, spiteful. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now, God, lifting up, God, our those in Buffalo, God, that entire community, that entire state. God, it didn't just affect New York, but it affect the nation and even our world. But God, we know, God, that you are still a supernatural God and that you're in control. So God, we ask and pray you dispatch your loving arms of, of protection, God, about that city, about those individuals, God, and comfort the family, God. Comfort the families, comfort that community, God. Comfort that state. Comfort us, God, right now. Father, right now, we invite you. We invite your spirit, God, right now. Holy Spirit, have your way today in this place, God. God, we, we are here to celebrate, God, but we are to celebrate you your life, your death, and your resurrection, God. So, God, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus. Can y'all say Jesus out there? In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
And if you just say Jesus, can y'all say Jesus out there? I got anybody that love Jesus out there. In the name of Jesus, we just come praying, God, lifting you up. We ask your blessings, God, upon this, your service, your people, God. Bless those, God, on Facebook, on YouTube, God, those who are on their way. Those who are visiting with us for the first time. God, we're lifting up, God, your men of God, Minister Marcus Sherman, all the way from Cincinnati. In the name of Jesus, God, we're, we're, we're asking your blessings over him. Thank you for his beautiful wife by his side, God. Father God, we're praying, God, for him to shake up and tear up this place, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I'm praying, God, he'll just wreck the place in your name, God. Father God, I'm praying right now, God, that we know that people are celebrating graduation, but God, I pray that someone will graduate their life into you, God. Father God, I'm praying that some soul be saved, some family be reconnected, God. Somebody would see, you know what, Lord, I, I saw Jesus today. And Father God, right now, we dare somebody to dream big today, God. Dream for you, Father. We give you the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we all sit together. If you want a blessing, say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, turn. we turn over to our praise, and you may be seated in the precious name of Jesus the Christ.
mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Awesome. Yes, he is. He's awesome. Oh, and he's so holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. I don't know about y'all, but Hallelujah! I heard the praise team, but I just raise your hand if you got an awesome God. Yes, Lord. Cause y'all want to sing it like he, you got an awesome God. You know, there's a. I want you to think you ain't got to be the super brightest person, Brother Mitchell. But the awesome, the other word of awesome, if you ain't awesome, he's horrible. Yes. So, uh, but but yes. when something is awesome in your life, then you should demonstrate it. Yes. How you Thank demonstrate you. it through your actions, through your words, and what yes, what you Lord. say. Um, I, I, I'm just not convinced that our praise is right where it, it, it should be. Amen. Um, I, it's not where it should be. Uh, I, I want I want to get the preacher a little warmed up a little bit. Mark, give me praise and give me a little bit of um. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, come on, praise him. Come on. Anybody want to bless the Lord today? Just stand up on your feet for a minute. We're gonna bless the Lord today. Yes, Lord. <laughs> There you go, there you go. That's what I need. Anybody want to bless the Lord today? There you go. I see y'all clapping now. That's it now. Because that's what we come to do, Marcus. We came to lift him up today.
There you go. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me.
Again, welcome to the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, 135 Maple Avenue. Man, right here in the heart of West Virginia, man, where we give God the praise because he's worthy to be praised. And we're so excited. This is our Dare to Dream, Planting Seeds of Hope Sunday. And man, we hope that you'll be blessed. And man, are you about, man, put your seatbelt on, man, take a take a sip of something, man, because you are in for a treat. I'm going to bring up none other than um, the guest speaker, uh, man, a dear friend of mine. And we met many, many, many years ago. Man, I want to say many. I, I am the older brother, even though he's a big brother. <laughs> I'm the older brother, man. I love him, love his wife, love his children. Our children have played together. Man, as a matter of fact, they went to Lincoln Heights Christian Academy together. Man, back in kindergarten and first grade. And man, and, and come on, give God some praise to that handsome couple, man. Man, you talking about... I was just sharing with him on last night, some church in one of these 50 states, it could be in another nation. They're gonna be blessed to have him as a pastor. I see it already. Man, he preached me last night. I was way here after midnight, he preached to my soul, and man, is he gonna preach to us today. But I don't wanna introduce, you know, sometimes the best person to introduce you is the person who's closest to you, other than God. Anybody close to God, wanna get close to God, you're gonna get close to him today. Man, I, I wanna get close. I'm gonna ask right now, and I'm gonna switch this to, Ask his beautiful wife and future first lady, Sister Brandy, if she'll come up. She's going to introduce our speaker. Come on, give God some praise. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I've never been asked to introduce him before, so I took a couple of notes. <laughs> uh, my name is Brandy. Um, as he said, this is my husband. I have known this man for 28 years. And uh, this week, whatever day the 24th falls on, we will have been married 25 years. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, two adult children and two grandchildren. <laughs> um, so I guess what kind of came to mind when he asked me to introduce him is that when you've known somebody that long, you really get up close and personal and get to know them. Um, but it's been so many stages of his life um, that I've been able to witness and watch him grow through. Um, I've known him as a, a teenage boy, um, struggling to get through school, um, trying to manage all of his emotions with different things that were going on in his life at that time. Um, didn't have much, <laughs> had a few outfits, a few pairs of shoes. Um, I've gotten to know him again. You know, we started out young, so we had children young. So I've seen him as a young father changing diapers, making bottles um, to, you know, when they grow up and, you know, you, you fussing, you trying to encourage, motivate, you know, um, trying to get them there, but just always being willing to do whatever he could and that this man will call up anybody he will talk to anybody if there's a resource out there that he can find <laughs> uh, he, he will find it <laughs> um he's always been a provider you know from the time you know like i said we were young if he had to work two jobs you know get minimal sleep he has always been willing to work and do whatever he had to do and so many times sacrificing his own personal needs um, he's a protector. It's a natural, his profession, you know, he protects, but it's like a natural instinct in him, you know. Um, so he's always made sure that his family was safe and felt protected. He's a giver. <laughs> I've watched this man give away cars, <laughs> money that he heard me fuss about. Uh, I remember one time he had a Bible and he had marked that Bible up with all kinds of notes. He had it for years. He took it to Iraq with him um, and different places that he had been. And a man he was working with had never had a Bible, gave him his Bible. Um, and um, I've even watched him give away opportunities for himself, you know. Um, uh, I've known this man as a motivator. <laughs> He can talk. <laughs> um, so, 
you know, you can start up a small conversation with him. Uh, he, he, he can talk, but oh, that's what I was getting at. He's a motivator, though. If you tell him that you want to do something, he will encourage you to do it. You know, he will build you up. Um, and just kind of a funny story, you, I had just happened to mention, I think I want to skydive. He motivated me so much and pumped my head out. I jumped 14,000 feet out of a plane a few years ago <laughs> as, as a way of overcoming fear. That was the lesson behind it. <laughs> um, he and I'm almost there, y'all. He, he's a minister. He has never needed a building, a pulpit, a church member. From the time he was young, on any job he's worked, he has never been afraid to talk about God. He's never been afraid to pull somebody to the side and pray for them. Um, a casual conversation about the color of the carpet sometimes can turn into a sermon, <laughs> a little mini sermon. So, um, and our family, they tease him all the time. You know, sometimes he'll get done talking, he look like you just got a Sherman sermon. <laughs> um, but knowing someone that long, like I said, you see they're good, they're bad, they're ups, they're downs, their strengths, their weaknesses. But no matter what he's gone through, one thing that has remained constant is his love for God and his heart for people. He truly desires to see people living at their highest and best potential. Um, so the man coming before you is not one that most of you have ever seen or heard of, but I assure you God knows him personally. God has walked with him, talked with him, wrestled with him, probably wanted to knock him upside his head a few times, but he has a very personal relationship with God. So I am so honored to welcome my husband, Marcus Sherman, to you all today. <laughs> First and foremost, I'm, I'm tremendously humbled to hear someone and someone so tremendously close to me to speak on my behalf that way. It, it, it almost makes me emotional to, 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 to hear the journey that God has brought me through up to this point and when someone is able to see your flaws and your weaknesses and your failures and for them to still be able to see the God in you yeah. despite what they've had to witness over the years again I am tremendously honored and I am humbled to have my wife and my best friend to speak on my behalf in that particular manner as, as, I, as I sat here, if I had to be completely and totally honest, I was sitting here um, doing praise and worship, and I began to think about, I, for whatever reason, I just kind of glanced to my left, and I, and I looked at this cross, and I said, man, the God that we serve is a really big deal. You know, and, and, and in praise and worship, we, we, we have to get out of this horrible habit of, of, of not recognizing and realizing how big of a deal this is. So, so on the way to West Virginia from Cincinnati, Ohio, I just began to think how big of a deal this is. I began to think of my journey from the very start uh, uh, to where I am now. And by no means am I where I want to be, right? But this is a big deal because I could have been in the jailhouse versus, versus God's house this morning, right? Many of us went to sleep. Some people went to sleep last night, right? But this is a really big deal. We have to get out of this horrible habit, and I'm not being judgmental because I'm guilty of it myself. But we have to get out of this horrible habit of not recognizing how big of a deal this is. We could have been anything. I could have been, I, I could have been in a mental hospital this morning with all the stress and the chaos taking place, not just in the world, but in my life. I absolutely didn't make all the right decisions along the way. Instead of me being a police officer, I could have been a convicted felon, right? I, I, I absolutely didn't make like all the right choices, but this is a big deal because I could have been strung out instead of being healthy. 
and good people, before I say and before I do absolutely anything, I think it's just absolutely fitting that I remind you all how big of a deal this is. That, that, that could have been us in Buffalo, New York. That could have been one of your loved ones in Buffalo, New York. So when you think of how big of a deal that is, we're not exempt from the enemy's attack. He desires to steal. He desires to kill. He desire, de desires to devour us too. But for whatever reason, at this particular moment anyways, God said not so. Brother Staples reached out to me and this guy and his family, um, Pastor Staples, I call him Big Brother Staples, um, his beautiful wife, First Lady Geronda, Nia Jalan. These guys are, are not connected to me via last name, but I do feel like we share the same God-given fatherly-based DNA because this guy has been an awesome mentor. He's been a phenomenal friend. He's been a tremendous and very consistent accountability partner along the way. And because of him and his family's influence in my life, I feel like it has helped me and held me accountable along the way and provoked me along the way to be a better man. So I know that if he's been a blessing to me and my family, I can only assume that he's been a tremendous blessing to you. And when I got in town last night, shortly after 9 p.m., this guy was in here cleaning and making sure that things were nice so that you guys will have a phenomenal place to serve this morning. And this is probably one of the hardest jobs known to man. You think about sometimes when he struggles, who does he have to go to? You guys can go to him, but who can he go to? When you guys need prayer, you can go to him, but who does he and his family have to go to? It's absolutely not an easy job. So uh, outside of recognizing and acknowledging the cross and God and Jesus, outside of acknowledging how big of a deal that is, I would just like to give a round of applause, our absolute very best round of applause for Pastor Staples and his beautiful family. Honestly, we can do just a little bit better than that, man. If you're able to stand up on your feet, please stand up on your feet. This guy is a really big deal. This guy was in here at 9 o'clock last night cleaning and vacuuming for you guys. This guy was praying and interceding last night for the graduates that we got in the house. This is a really big deal. And, Pastor, although your job is thankless at times... I just want to let you know, good sir, that we love you, First Lady. We love you. We thank God for you, and we appreciate you. I must admit, I'm not going to be before you guys uh, uh, really long. I, I promise you I won't. And, and if I had, to be honest, so again, for those who don't know me, many of you don't know me, my name is Marcus Sherman, and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I, I'm a little outside of my element right now because I'm not accustomed to being dressed like this, right? Um, uh, uh, and, and, and I guess my theory behind the dress is that when I, when I envision Jesus and his example, right, Jesus was walking amongst the murderers, and he was walking amongst the drug addicts, and he was walking amongst the, 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 the liars and the thieves and the, 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 the adults. In Jesus, he worked in a very grimy environment, and I can only just envision that he didn't necessarily have one of Sunday's best when he was in those particular environments. So I feel like, and, and, and nothing is wrong with, 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 you know, with wearing your Sunday's best. Nothing is wrong with that. But I say I'm a, I'm a little outside of my element at the moment because that is not God's call for me. I, too, I, I, I grew up in crime-infested, drug-infested conditions. My mother was 16 years old when she had me. My father, he was 18 and absentee. 
the, the, the environments that I professionally work in right now are some of the most dangerous and some of the most gritty and grimy environments that you guys could ever think or imagine. But I remember God helped me to understand at a very young age that the places that he was, that he was sending me, I had a prophecy over my life back in 2002 where a young lady told me, she said, the street corner is your pulpit and your mouth is your weapon. I can't go to some of those environments dressed in a suit and tie. The environments in which I've been called to go into require me to go to warfare, so I have to be dressed and I have to be prepared to fight and to play that particular part. Pastor Staples, he reached out to me just a couple of days ago, and if I had to be totally honest, when he asked me before fear kicked in, before I had an opportunity to get in my way or God's way, when he asked me on very short notice to come um, 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 speak to you all today, before I could allow myself to be hindered by fear, before I knew it, I had said yes. But how do I plan and how do I prepare for something of this magnitude because this is a big deal? I don't take lightly having an opportunity to, 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 po to potentially positively impact somebody else's life. This is a matter of life or death to me, and it's not something that should be taken lightly because you don't know what problems or what situations or what circumstances somebody had to fight through in order to get here this morning. So Lord, this is not a small task, but when he asked me, I said yes, but then I have this dilemma because I have no time to prepare. I'm asking God, God, what is it that you would have me to say to your people? I'm praying, I'm thinking, I'm trying to, to isolate and put myself in a position or a situation to hear directly from God. But if I had to be honest, he was silent. He did not give me a step-by-step -step outline to even bring before you all on today. I'm sitting in the hotel room this morning. I stayed up all night and I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm sitting in the hotel room and Brother Richardson was on his way. I'm sitting in the hotel room with tears running down my face because again, Lord, you brought me here, but you gave me absolutely nothing to say. God, I know that you're not gonna bring me here to humiliate. I know that you're not going to bring me here to miss out on an opportunity to say something to one of these young people. So as I sat back, as I finally got to the church and as I sat back in the office, I tried to read, I tried to pray, but I simply just came to the conclusion that God, if you don't do it, if you don't say it, if you don't present it, then it just won't and it can't be done. But one thing that I know about my journey is that as I look back over every obstacle, as I look back over every fear, as I look back over every challenge, every hardship, I honestly can't think of not one time where the Lord has abandoned me. So as I, th as I thought about today's thing, dare to dream. And again, I don't have it all together and I'm not going to be before you guys long, but as I thought about today's thing, dare to dream. I thought to myself, I said, well, dare to dare someone means to challenge them. To dare someone means to provoke them. And to dream means to see yourself beyond where you're currently at. 
So the theme is, in layman's terms, is that I'm daring you to see yourself beyond where you're currently at. What does that look like? I dare you to see yourself beyond living in poverty. I dare you to see yourself getting an education despite your severe learning disabilities. I dare you to see yourself, your marriage working out even though it looks like it's headed towards divorce. I dare you, I challenge you to see yourself beyond where you're currently at. But as I, as I began to really think about this dare, and as I began to think about this dream, not that it's always easy to dream, because in many instances, we have to overcome a lot of mental roadblocks and a lot of trauma and a lot of generational curses and a lot of fear. It, we, we have to overcome all of these things just for us to have the ability to dream. So again, not saying that dreaming is the easy part, but if I had to back up, for somebody to challenge you it's easy for them because they don't have to do the work. Dreaming and fantasizing, not saying that it's always easy, but it's easy. It's easy for a young kid to lay in the bed and to, and to, to fantasize or to dream about going to the NBA. When I'm broken, when I'm uh, uh, living in financial lack, it's easy for me to lay in my bed and to daydream about how wonderful things or how wonderful life would be when I hit the lottery. That's easy. So Pastor Staples and his theme, Dare to Dream, he is challenging you and he is provoking you to dream and to see yourself beyond where you're currently yet and not to discredit the thing. But if I had to venture to say, that's the easy part. But as I'm riding down, I, I believe it's 50 or whatever the highways are coming into Fairmont, West Virginia. I said, daring to dream, that's the easy part. But I began to think to myself how the hard part is getting across the bridge from the start of the dream to the end. Most dreams don't die at the dream stage. And then once I get whatever it was that, that I'm praying for, that's a good feeling too. Most dreams don't die at that particular point in time. The dream is typically aborted or the, or the dream typically dies, not at the dream stage, not at the challenge or the provoke stage, not at the end, but the dream is typically aborted and or dies in the middle. And I just began to think to myself, what would I say to anybody? who is trying to get across the bridge. The inception of the dream, that's the start of it. The manifestation of the dream, that's, what's, that, that, that's when I get what I've been dreaming or praying for. But everybody feels so good come uh, January the 1st every year and we set all of these lofty goals for ourselves about how we're going to get in shape, how good we're going to look, but when it comes time to cross the bridge, when I have to get up early now and go to the gym and work out, when I have to drastically change my diet, when I have to stop drinking and smoking, we envision the benefit, but we don't envision the process. I began to think to myself, I'll never forget one year. I was, I was 
primarily raised by my, by my grandparents. Again, my mother was 16. I absolutely loved my parents, um, but my parents were kids when they had me. Um, so I was primarily raised by my, my grandparents, and I never will forget one year my grandmother had told me, she said, one day, I'm sorry, my grandmother told me, she said, Marcus, she said, go over to your aunt's house and see if I can borrow a, a roll of paper towels. I'm about seven years old. I go over to my aunt's house, I get the paper towels. I come back and, and as I'm walking back to my grandmother's house, I'm throwing the paper towels up in the air as if it was a ball. And at seven years old, not having a father, I remember saying to myself, I'm going to be a good father one day. That's the dream. I'm going to be a great father one day. But what the Lord didn't reveal at that moment was that you're going to be a 19-year-old father. What the Lord didn't reveal at that moment is that you're going to be a father and you're only going to make $7.50 an hour and you're going to struggle to figure out how you're going to now take care of that child. The dream was the easy part. I'm going to be a great father one day. But the hard part came into play when it was time for me to cross the bridge. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope. Plans to give you success. And plans to give you a future. That's the declaration and that's the promise and that particular promise is applicable to everybody in this room. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your educational status is or is not. I don't care what your race is. I don't care what traumas you have been exposed to. For I know the plans that I have for you. We serve a just God. This, this word is not just applicable to certain people. This word and these promises are applicable to all. For I know the specific intention, purpose, and plan that I have for your life. And that's plans to prosper you, not to harm. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But in that particular verse, there was never any mention that the process and the journey would be easy. I thought about just, just, just many different things. And I said, but how do I dream and how do I see beyond where I'm currently at when I have this whole list and this whole host of adversity standing in front of me? And if we can envision being at the start of the bridge and looking across the bridge, and you see all of this nasty, ugly, horrible, scary, stressful stuff in between. What is your why and what is your reason for taking the step? You're looking at somebody who struggled with a severe learning disability my entire elementary, middle, and high school career. I sent Brother Staples my, uh, a copy of my high school transcript where my class ranking was 382 out of 445. 
GPA at one point was a 1.36, and it took me five years to graduate from high school. But what provoked me, despite seeing the learning disability, despite having to continue with the, the, the limited expectations that so many other people had spoken over my life, for whatever reason, I had this dream of being able to get my education. I really couldn't process all the way what I read. I spoke horribly. I struggled tremendously to write. But I'm at the start, but I have this dream of getting my education. But as I'm looking across the bridge and as I'm looking at the journey, I'm looking at all the things that I'm going to have to maneuver through and overcome in order to get to the other side. And I had to ask myself, what is my why? For what reason would I have the audacity and what reason would I have the nerve to do something, to think that I can do something that everybody else has already told me could not be done? How do I get to the other side of this bridge? And lesson number one is that you have to have and you have to establish your why. And your why has to supersede and be more important than just you. The gift, the, the, the plan that God has for you, Jeremiah 29 and 11, the specific intention that he has for you, Jeremiah 29 and 11, that plan and that intention was not to just bless you. So as I sat here as this kid, this dysfunctional um, 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 kid who struggled in school all of my life, I'm three classes away from having a master's degree. But what was my why? But what was my why? What gave me the nerve to even think that it could be done? So my why was this at the time. My why initially was my son. So when my son was in school, I began to see some of the same struggles, academic struggles, in my son that I myself went through. So remember, the plan, the intent that God has for you is not just for you. It's to bless, it's to bless the world around you. So as I began to see my son struggle, I'll never forget, I remember it like it was yesterday, my son came home, Tears in his eyes, tears running down his face, and my son said, I hate school. My son said, man, I'm not smart. I can't do it. I, 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 I hate school. So without even thinking about it, I told my son, I said, I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you through my example that anything that you are willing to fight for, anything that you are willing to work for, that it can absolutely be done. So as my son sat there crying, sitting on the couch with tears in his face, I made this promise, this declaration to my son, I'm going to show you through my example that it can be done. I went the very next day, I got my high school transcripts, I brought them home and I showed them to my son. absent 45, 50 days in, in a school year, GPA of 1.36, Ds and Fs scattered all over the transcript. And I presented it to my son, and I said, I'm going to show you by my example that it can be done. The very next day, I go down to Cincinnati State, and I register for my first college class. Since being in college, I started out with, with, with an associate's, then it went to a bachelor's, and now I'm three classes away from a master's. But it all started out with a dream. And the why and my reason for pursuing that dream, it had to be greater than me. So 
So I learned along this particular journey, how do I keep from dying on the bridge? How do I keep from aborting my dream between the, the start and the finish? How do I keep from forfeiting the plan that God has for my life in this in-between uh, in this in between phase? And lesson number one is you have to have a very important why that's bigger and more important than just you. Don't pray and ask God for money just so that you can get out here, man, and flash and floss and engage in a bunch of materialism. You ask God for financial resources so that you can break generational curses of lack on your family. You ask God for financial resources so that you can finance your kids' education yourself instead of them having to take out astronomical amounts of student loan debt. You ask God to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. What is your why? And your why has to supersede reasons more important than you. If your why is strong enough, that's step number one to getting across the bridge. Lesson number two, what I found out about this bridge, this bridge that we attempt to cross. This bridge that we attempt to cross, you have to understand that not everybody is going to be excited about the plan that God has for you. And you have to know that going into it. In the book of Genesis, it was this guy named Joseph, and Joseph was 17 years old. And Joseph, man, even at 17, remember, dreaming is having the ability to see beyond where you're currently at. So at 17 years old, Joseph, God gives Joseph a dream. And in this dream, Joseph sees himself as being great. He wasn't great at the moment, but he saw he had this dream. God began to show him where I'm going to take you to. So lesson number two, so number one is your why. Lesson number two is understand, and you got to understand this going into it, that not everybody is going to be excited about the plan and what God is doing for you. Because no soon as Joseph took or told his dream to his brothers, the scripture says they hated him even more. So step number two to surviving the bridge is we have to be so tremendously careful of who we tell our dreams to. Step number three, going into this, it's not always your so-called haters who will hate your dream. In this instance, it was his brothers. And, and for those of you who are familiar with that particular scripture, it was also his father. When Joseph came back and he told his father that I had another dream of being great. I had another dream of being more than what maybe a, a society say I am. I had another dream that I wouldn't be broke, that one day I am going to be rich. I had this dream. His father looked at him and said, what kind of dream is that? I'm looking at these small children in the house. And, and, and I have to kind of check and convict myself and rebuke myself as well. For those of us who are parents, we got to be so tremendously careful on placing our limitations of God's dream for our children. His father said to him, what kind of dream is that? At that particular moment, it wasn't his father's job to, 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 to diminish his hope. It wasn't his father's job at that particular moment to define what God's plan was for him. And you think about this, you have to know, I have to have a why 
but I also have to know as I'm attempting to cross the bridge between the start of the dream and as I'm trying to get the evidence of the dream, I have to understand and I got to know going into it that rejection is part of the process. There were so many times, and I'm coming up on point number three, there were so many times as I was attempting to cross this bridge, there were so many times where I was looking for validation and affirmation in all the wrong places. Joseph wanted his brothers to be proud of him. Then he wanted his father to be proud of him. But step number three to surviving the bridge is that we have to understand that the only validation we need is the validation that comes from the author of our lives. The author knows the beginning. He wrote the story. He knows the middle. He knows the hardships. And he absolutely knows your victorious end. So I got to have a why, and that why has to be greater than me. If I had to just pause and maybe back up just a little bit, I'm daring everybody in here not to only dream big. I'm daring you guys to dream unrealistically big. The dream sometimes is, man, go to school, get, get your degree, man, and, and, and go get a job. That, that, I'm not saying that's not a good dream, but that's the, that's the same dream that everybody else has. Like I said at the very start, we serve a big God. We serve a world-changing God. They said in praise and worship, we serve an awesome God. So if this guy is big, if he's world-changing, if he's awesome, then why are we setting or establishing these mediocre, average, and safe dreams? Yeah. Know your why. Be careful, very careful who you tell your dream to. Don't go, don't, don't embark. Understand that rejection is part of the process. But coming up on this, 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 this current point is that God's approval yeah. is the only approval that I need. Young people, you graduates, you were created, you kids, you young people, you guys were created in the image of God. I don't care what trauma, I don't care what hardship, I don't care what lack, for he knows the plan that he has for you. And that word declare is a very strong word. When you declare something, it is so. I don't care what the teachers say, I don't care what your mama say, I declare. I know the plans that I declare for you, says the Lord. How do I get across this bridge? Joseph went from, we, and we have to understand this too, the world we live in is evil. This is Satan's, whether we realize it or not, this is Satan's domain. The Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when you think about, let, let, let's, let's even go back to this cross for a quick second. Satan attempted to kill it because of the billions of people that it was going to benefit. Your dream is not for you. Joseph, still talking about Joseph, Joseph said that you intended to harm me. 
but God intended it to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So whatever that dream is that God put in you, he gave it to you for, for a specific reason, and that reason is to save and to be a benefit to other people's lives. So again, we're operating in Satan's domain. Again, this is a very evil world. Again, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we have to understand as we're crossing this bridge that the enemy is absolutely going to try to kill us. And you have to understand that that death, that assault, that assassination is not just always physical. He tries to kill your confidence along the way. He tries to make you second guess God's gifts and talents that he done blessed you with. He tries to kill and rob you of your peace along the way. And I don't know if I'm on step number four. I think this is step number four. The key to making across the bridge is that we understand this is an evil place and the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he's not after you. He's after the hundreds or the thousands or the tens of thousands of people that you were purposed to reach. This thing is bigger than you. So as he's attempting to kill you, you have to understand that if I allow him to win, that other lives are at stake. And he don't just take me out. He has the possibility or the potential to take out all the people that my gift was supposed to reach. We are not called to be selfish as believers. We are called to be selfless. And for us to quit while we're attempting to cross the bridge, that is selfish. Pastor Staples and First Lady, they're not the only ones who are going to be judged on Judgment Day. These pastors, they have a responsibility that I personally would not want. You know why? Because not only are they responsible for their own lives, they're responsible for how they help to manage and guide your lives. But sometimes we think that Pastor Staples ha has a responsibility that we ourselves don't have, and that's not true. Everybody in here is responsible for the life of another. And every time you're disobedient, every time you quit, every time you sin, every time you turn and run back in fear, you are not just disappointing yourself, you are disappointing God. And you are disappointing the people who you're not even aware of that are counting on you. Joseph has this dream of being great. Joseph has this dream of seeing himself beyond his current situation and where he's currently yet. Joseph gets rejected. Joseph is looking for validation in all the wrong places. But how can God show me that I'm going to be great and now allow me to go through everything that I got to go through just to get to the other side? This guy named Joseph has this phenomenal dream and I'm sure it felt good. It, it feels good seeing and knowing that one day I'm gonna be, be great, that had to feel good. But no soon as Joseph had the dream, please excuse my language and I don't say it in the wrong way, but soon as Joseph had the dream, soon as he shared the dream, almost instantaneously all hell started breaking loose. I had this dream of being great. Now they, now, now, now they plotting to kill me. I had this dream of being great. Now you allow me to be sold into slavery. I had this dream of being great, but now you have my character being assassinated and people running around here lying on me. 
But one thing that I noticed about Joseph, and this is another key to getting to the other side of the bridge, there weren't too many scripture-based accounts of Joseph complaining throughout the journey. Which reiterates to me that even though he, he, he found himself in some uncomfortable places, it reminds me and it reiterates to me that the promise that he got initially, that it superseded the problems that he was facing currently. I don't know if that made sense. As he was maneuvering through prison, as he was maneuvering through slavery, as he was maneuvering through his character being assassinated, there were not too many accounts of him complaining. Which reiterates to me that the promise that God spoke before the problem, that the promise was bigger than, that the promise was bigger than the problem. I don't care what your transcript currently look like. I don't care how hard the current class may be. I don't care what your finances look like. I don't care what your kids currently got going on at the moment that's stressing you out. Focus more so on the promise. More so than the problem. I'll never forget um, for those who don't know, uh, I'm a city of Cincinnati police officer. Again, I come from um, deplorable living conditions. Um, I had to overcome a lot of personal challenges when I was coming up. Um, life has not been easy. I felt like giving up on several different occasions. Um, you know, I had to battle to overcome depression. I had to battle to overcome just so many different things. And I, I'm not here, I'm not a victim, right? You know, God, the God that I serve is a beast. He's, a, he, 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 he's phenomenal, he's awesome. So I'm not going to present myself as being a victim right now, but I'm just saying that life has not always been easy. But I never will forget one night, it's, it's about three, four o'clock in the morning, I, I, I'm working an off-duty, like overtime-based detail, and, and, and I'm working at a gas station, and this young man, he comes in, and, 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 and for lack of a better term, I'm not being judgmental when I say this, but he kind of he kind of fit the stereotypical description, right? He had the braids in his hair, he had all the gold teeth in his mouth, um, his pants was three, four sizes too big, and when he walked in the store, he had this scowl on his face. He looked at me, and I looked at him. I'll never forget this young man. He went to the, he went to the freezer. He got a, a, a Red Bull energy drink. He went to the counter. He bought him a pack of cigarettes. And as he walked out the store, I was simply just going to make sure that the parking lot was clear. As he walked out the store, I walked out behind him. He jumps in his car, he puts it in reverse, he backs the car up, he puts it back in drive, he pulls back into the parking space, he gets out the car and he say, can I ask you a question? So now I'm kind of on edge, right? Just kind of based on the perception. So I kind of, you know, my, my energy, my posture probably changed just a little bit. And I said, yeah, I said, what's your question? He said, can I ask you when life is beating you up. He said, when you are completely and totally overwhelmed. He said, when you feel like giving up, he said, what do you do? So I'm caught completely and totally off guard by this question. So my initial response, well, you know, I, I, I work out. I like to hang out, spend time with my family. And the Lord stopped. Yes, yes, yes. And in this fraction of a second, I had this split second where the Lord helped me to spiritually process what this young man was asking me. And I'll never forget I had an opportunity right then and there to kind of start sharing my testimony with this young man. And I began to tell this guy, man, when I feel like giving up and quitting, and I told him, don't let this uniform fool you. Life still attacked me the way it attacked you. So many areas of my life are a mess too. Don't you? I said, bro, but when I don't know what to do, 
I said, I don't know what your faith is or what your re religious affiliation is. I said, but you're asking me what I do. And I said, and what I do when life is overwhelming me, when I feel like giving up, I said, I go to him. At that particular moment, I take the problem to the one who gave me the promise. I told this young man, I said, this is what I do. And this young man is sitting there, and I just said, hey, man, and it's a parking lot full of people. And I remember saying to this young man, I said, would you mind if I prayed with you before you leave? We're standing outside. It's a parking lot full of people. This young man put his car keys down and his cigarettes down right there on the pavement. This young man gives me his hand. I take his hand. I put another hand on his shoulder, and I begin to pray for him at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning in front of a parking lot full of people in one of the worst neighborhoods in Cincinnati, Ohio. And as I began to pray for this young man, I began to say things aloud. Lord, remind him that he is a king and not a servant. Father God, I bind and I rebuke every attack over this young man's life. And as I'm praying over this young man, he begins to just weep. I shake his hand. I give him a hug. He jumps in his car and he leaves. And at that moment, I'm thinking about Joseph again, and I'm going somewhere with this. I ran into the store. It's 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I pick up the phone. I call my wife, and I say to her, if I had to go through everything that I've been through in my life all over again, I would do it just to have a moment like this. Because the moment that God blessed me with that young man, I couldn't have gave him any experience from a textbook. I couldn't have ministered to that young man based on something that I just heard. As I stood there in front of that store, in front of all these people in one of the worst neighborhoods in Cincinnati, it was all the experiences that God allowed me to venture and journey through. It was all the uncomfortable places that God had me to journey and venture through that gave me an opportunity to be a blessing to him. The promise is so tremendously bigger than your problem. And as I get ready to close out, remember that the problems are not to break you. The problems are to equip you. Like Joseph said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The problems as you're crossing the bridge from the dream to actually getting what it is you're dreaming for, the problems are not meant to break you. The problems are not an indication that God hates you. The problem is not you being punished for, not, for you not being perfect. The problems are not to break you. They're not to harm you. They're not to destroy you. They're not to delay you. The problems are to equip you to be a blessing to all the many people who God have called you to be a blessing to. As you guys see, I did not refer to any notes. I had no notes to refer to. So to be honest, this, this is just for show. I had zero notes to refer to, but all I could give you guys this morning was that I could tell you, and I don't need any notes to tell you, what I know that our God has the ability to do. Yeah. Young people, graduates, even, even us older folks, I dare you, I challenge you, I provoke you to dream beyond where you're currently at. God did not intend mediocrity or lack for our lives. 
all these preachers, they get up here nowadays and they talk so tremendously much about money and people being broke, but forget being broke financially. God did not intend for us to be broken. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the materialism in the world. You can have all the degrees in the world. You can have the most important job titles in the world and still be broken. I'm challenging everybody in here, dare to be healed. Dare, dare to be whole. I don't care what family you come from. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care what sins or, or, or shortcomings you may be struggling with. We serve a, we serve a big God who is tremendously awesome, who wants nothing but the absolute very best for us. Not everybody is going to be happy for you. Stop looking for validation and confirmation in all the wrong places. Go into the process understanding you're going to be rejected at times. You're going to be told no at times. Go through your process graciously. Understand that even as I'm going through my process, that it could always be tremendously worse. And whether I'm in the valley, right? Whether I'm, in the, whether I'm on the mountaintop, right? No matter where Joseph went, God was with him. And it's no different for us. Even when we don't feel his presence, he's there. Even when we don't realize he's leading and guiding us, he's there. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be told no. You're going to have problems. You have to go through the process. But standing before you guys today as a guy, like I said, I come from nothing. And not saying that I'm anywhere near where I would like or hope or want to be because I'm not. You're looking at a guy who still suffers and deals with and has to endure and, 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 and get through different life-related problems. You know, we, we put on our Sunday's best and we try to look as perfect man as we could possibly or potentially be, but you're looking at a guy who's tremendously imperfect. You're looking at a guy who still gets held captive by fear every now and again. You're looking at a guy, man, who some days I do want to give up and quit. You're looking at a guy, sometimes I do have these running dialogues and I do get upset and I do get frustrated with God as he does me. But for whatever reason, God has blessed us, whether we realize it or not, God has blessed us with a spirit that should not allow us to quit. I come from nothing, I had nothing, I had to fight and scrap for absolutely everything that I had. So my, my, my plea to you all today is to not just dream. My plea to you all today is to get across the bridge. Don't allow your dream, whatever that dream may be, don't allow your dream to die while going through the process. Don't lose hope. Part of dreaming is having hope. Don't lose hope on the promise by focusing too heavily on the problems. Man, I love you guys. I thank you guys for welcoming me into your home. Um, I didn't say much as promised. I wasn't too long-winded. Um, but I hope that something was said today that would provoke and or challenge you guys to do more. And in closing, I'm just going to say that time is not on our side. We have to do it today, not tomorrow. 
So with that being said, Pastor Staples, is he near? Absolutely. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Richardson. If, 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 if I may pass the staples, would, would it be okay as you come up, good sir? Um, I, I see a lot of young people in the house. Is it okay if I just from the pulpit just, just, just pray over the young people? You know, e even their parents. You know, can, can I have some of the young people come up? Is, is that okay? Our, our graduates, our school-age children who are getting ready to, 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 to graduate, single parents, I, I don't care. Young people, come on up here. Graduates, come on up here. This, this, this is a really big deal. This is a really big deal. The, these young men, my, my, I, I have a heart for these young men. And, and, and the enemy is after all of our children, but he's especially after these young men. These young men have so much to contend with. Father God, I'm gonna stay here with Minister Marcus. Let your hands go down because um, you're standing right there. But Brother Marcus is gonna pray, but and prayer does work. But. That's okay. Those are chimes from heaven. <laughs> That's heaven saying, I'm waiting on you. Because I, I had you drop your hands because you need to understand me and Minister Marcus, we have similar things that have gone on in our life. Dr. Hagee, I stuttered so bad when I was in the second and third grade that they said it'd be a miracle if I get to high school. I was inner city projects. And we we're on government cheese, food stamps, welfare for 21 years. But mama prayed for me. I stuttered so bad, I stuttered so bad, Tian, that they said, there's no way this guy, if he gets to, if he even gets to high school, my eyes were crossed. And I don't know if Minister Marcus mentioned, but Minister Marcus at one time had a 1.3 GPA. 1.6, could you imagine that? I think he said that he was out of the 300 and something in the class, he was, out of 445, he was 382. And last night when he shared with me of the 382, I know some of y'all thinking, well, at least he wasn't 400, but those 18, they had already dropped out. <laughs> they had already been killed or shot. But God was saving him for something. So what am I saying to you young people? It's a great day and graduation is a great time. But if you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not been saved, if you've not said, Lord, I surrender, I give my life to you. And you want to do that right now, man, can't be no, you can't give yourself a better graduation gift. It can't, no car, no money, no anything. What saved me and Minister Marcus was God himself. Don't get me wrong, mother bird, it's good to have a praying mother. But there comes a time when a young man and young woman's wife, and they got to start praying for themselves. And Sister Smith would always say every tub has at some point sit on its own bottom. That's old school. So if you're here today, Minister Marcus is standing. He's going to pray. 
But before he prays, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, he's going to pray. But if you're here and you want to receive Jesus Christ, I'm going to move you back on that side. You and Jocelyn stand on that side. Because I want, if, you want, if you want to receive Jesus Christ, I, I want you to come up to Minister Marcus. Go, go down to Minister Marcus. Go down there. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, I want you to come. I'm going to put him right here in the middle. If you want to receive Christ before he prays for you, want to receive Jesus. Listen, if you receive Christ today, you're not, you're not joining Mount Zion. You're joining Christ. Let me make that clear. Mount Zion will point you to where you need to be. We might not be the church. It might be over there. It might be over there. But giving your life to Christ has nothing to do with Mount Zion whatsoever. Churches and people, they come and go. But Jesus and his word is the same today and forevermore. It never changes. So if, if you're feeling in your heart right now, I, before I go off to college, before I move on in my journey, even if you're going from preschool to wherever you're going from, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Even if you're out there and you're older and you need to receive Jesus, you can come. You, I, this ain't just for young folks. Some old folk need to receive Jesus. You want a relationship with him. You, you, know, he's, you know it's good to go to church, but, and you, feel, you felt Minister Mark is what he said, but you want to receive Jesus. I want you to... Just come and stand next to Minister Marcus. If you want to receive Jesus Christ today, we're going to wait for you. No pressure. You just feel in your heart, I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive Jesus Christ. Because guess what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes, Minister Marcus talk about the bridge, but sometimes the bridge is scary. Because over the bridge, there's water beneath and it's a big drop. And so if you're feeling scary today, to any of you guys who are graduates or, or whatever you are today, Minister Marcus is just a bridge, and he's safe. And so if you're here today and you want to receive Jesus today, and if you've already received Jesus and you just want to recommit your life to Christ, sometimes, Mother Bird, we just need a second touch. We need to recommit, rededicate. Then if not, you just need prayer, Brother Marcus, will pray. So if you're here today and you want to receive Jesus Christ, we're going to give you a second. Come to Brother Marcus. He's not Jesus, but he represents Jesus. And if not, he's going to pray for all of you. Anybody wants to come? Again, collectively as a body, we're praying. And as Pastor Staples just said, as big of a mess as my life was, he says something and I absolutely can't believe that I overlooked it because all those steps, those steps, none of them work if you don't have a relationship with him. I never will forget one day I had a dream and in this dream somebody was trying to kill me and at the end of the dream I was down on my knees, I was crying, crying really, really hard. And as I was trying to articulate this prayer to God, the only word that would come out of my mouth in this dream was the word Jesus. Then I would go back in this dream, and again, it's a dream, I would go back to crying really, really hard, and I would try to articulate a prayer, and the only word that would again come out was Jesus. And I never will forget when I woke up, the dream was so real. And I was so disturbed by the dream. I said, because I'm not doing anything wrong. Why would I have a dream that somebody is trying to kill me? And that was one of the first times that I uh, uh, can, can truly recall God speaking to me. And he said, Marcus, nobody is trying to kill you physically. He said, but the enemy is trying to murder you spiritually. Ironically, I had this dream on a Sunday afternoon because it's maybe 12, 31, 1, 30 in the afternoon when I had this dream. I wake up out my sleep. I'm walking around the house or the apartment at the time, tremendously disturbed. I go to hop in the shower and get dressed, and Brandy and my daughter were asleep at the time. And Brandy said, where are you going at 12, 31 o'clock? I said, I'm going to church. And I remember being 20 years old, walking through the main doors of the sanctuary, in just enough time for the altar call to be made. So I got out my bed, I got dressed, I ran to church, I walked through the church doors, and I went from walking through the, the main doors of the sanctuary immediately right up to the altar. I tell you guys right now, man, like it's, I, I, I'm telling you, you will not and you won't make it absent a relationship with God. 
Young people, he, he, the enemy is trying to kill y'all, whether you realize it or not. I remember when my daughter was a baby and we, we brought her up to the altar to get prayer. I never will forget, I cried like a baby. To hear that pastor pray over my daughter and start to rebuke all these horrible things. He started praying over my daughter and he started saying, I just bind and I rebuke the spirit of addiction. I bind and I rebuke the spirit of depression. I bind and I rebuke the spirit of lack and poverty. I bind and I rebuke, and I never will forget that it made me so emotional as a father because as a father, as men, we're protectors. And at that particular moment, I realized that there was nothing that I could do to really protect my daughter from all of these evil and foul things that this world would try to bring against her. And the only thing that I could do at that particular moment as a grown man was that I had to submit, I had to surrender, and I had to give her on that particular day, I had to give her back to God. I had to say that, Lord, only you possess the ability. I can't be with her everywhere she goes. I'm not, your, your, your mom, your dad, they're not going to be on the college campus with you. Your mom, your dad, when that demonic spirit of addiction tries to get you to try a joint or try some alcohol, mom and dad is not going to be there. When that bullet comes flying through the air, mom and dad are not going to be there. So the absolute very best decision that any of us in this room could ever make it's for us to make sure, no matter how young, no matter how old, it's for us to make sure that we're in proper standing with our Lord and our Savior. And I don't want you young people to be fooled by us old people. This walk, it's not a perfect walk. You're going to make mistakes along your journey. You're going to do what you want to do instead of what God wants you to do at certain times throughout your journey. You are going to fail yourselves. You're going to fail your families. You're going to fail God. But the great part, man, about this guy who we call God, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, is that he loves you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I don't care who turned their back on you. I don't care who has spoke limits and negativity over your life. You serve somebody, man, who loves you yes. and who wants nothing less than the absolute very best for you. I'm old now, I'm not cool now, but I'm here to tell you that if he did it for me, that I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever in my mind that he could do it for you. He desires to do it for you. With that being said, Father God, we just come before you right now. This is serious business, Father God, and we do not take this moment of prayer and intercession over these young people lightly. Lord, as they get ready to venture into the next chapters of their lives, Lord God, we just plead your blood, Father God, over their journey. We just pray, Father God, and we ask, Lord God, that you would bless and anoint every step. Father God, you didn't speak, Lord God. You didn't, you didn't envision mediocrity for these young people. Lord God, whatever your gifts are, whatever creativity you place within them, whatever your purpose and plan is for their lives, Lord God, we are begging and pleading and giving you permission to have your way. Lord, we just come before you. Lord, this world is such a horrible place. It's such a dangerous place. And it just seems like, Lord God, at times that the enemy is just running rampant. But Lord God, let your blood, Lord God, let it cover them, Father God. Lord God, give their parents wisdom. And I even speak to myself. Give us as parents wisdom. Lord, show us how to, how to guide your children into the destiny and the plan, Lord God, that you have for their lives. 
Father God, we just thank you. Father God, we love you. Father God, you are so deservingly worthy. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for him. We apologize to our special guest, man. Man, I, Minister Marcus has to, has to go before he does really quickly. Just a couple of quick announcements. Man, just give God a hand clap of praise. Were, were you blessed by Minister Marcus? Wow, what a, how to keep your dream from dying. Man, that was, that is awesome. You'll see that to our YouTube and our Facebook family. Man, I hope you were blessed too. Man, you'll see clips of him. And man, I, I, we're just blessed. Man, thank you for Chris and Michaela. Hang on, Brother, brother Chris. Man, because I, I, we just want to do one special thing before we um, go. Brother um, Houston, if we can, we are, uh, I'm going to make a couple quick announcements before I do a blessing. Minister Marcus has to get back on the road, has six-hour trips. He drove down. He got off at 7 a.m. on yesterday, slept for a couple hours, and then jumped on the road. Now he's got to jump on the road again in about 10, 15 minutes. Got to, Houston's got to hightail him back to the hotel. But we're going to lift up our offering real quick as we normally do. And we, we have three ways in which we give. We give through Givelify and we give. I don't have my envelope with me, Sister Staples. You see my envelope over there? <laughs> we give. Got three ways we give. We have an envelope. Can I see the envelope? Get, give me an offering envelope. Thank you, sis. Thank you. We have three ways which we give here, and we ask and pray that maybe God will put on your heart today. We have givelify.com, those who are tech savvy, and just go to givelify.com, and you can see Dare to Dream on there. And um, man, we did a lot for our young people. We are a small church, but we have a huge heart for Christ because we are about, we are, how many, how many of you are kingdom kids? I'm a kingdom kid. <laughs> I'm a kingdom kid, and I hope you are too. And so right now, we just take this opportunity to give back. You can use your offering. You can go to givelify.com or you can go to uh, Mount Zion uh, MTZ Fairmont, which is, uh, what is that again, babes? I forget. Cash App. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mitchell. Get cash App for young people. And uh, man, you know, you want to be a blessing to someone. Guess what? You can't beat God's giving. So we encourage um, that you would, you can go give that way or other way. And if, and if you don't, that's okay. Pray for Mount Zion that we will continue to reach out to the community to do great things for God. Because guess what? We serve an awesome God. We serve a phenomenal God. And guess what? God is a, we serve a, how many God? I got, we serve a big God. And guess what? I know that COVID has changed a lot of things and a lot of people, but it ain't changed God. Dr. Hagen ain't changed God one iota. We may have had to go to Zoom. We may have to go remote. But guess what? God is still alive. <laughs> God is still alive. He's not missed a beat. And guess what? This Sunday, you are a very special guest at Mount Zion. This makes our 115th consecutive Sunday. We've never had to close. Give God some praise. And we just praise God. Haven't had an outbreak. We just give him the praise and glory and the honor. And we're going to be real quick, get our graduates um, up. I'm going to have little Jeremiah, um, and we're so grateful to have special guests here today. We have the superintendent of our schools. We have the board of president of our schools. We have the greatest high school president that, I mean, the greatest high school principal today that there is, and that's Mr. Green. He's from the high, um, 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 Fairmont Senior. We have the best elementary school because he's here, and that is, that is also, that's Principal Morris, wherever he is. And we also have the greatest daycare director, that's Miss Prickett. So we're excited. Give us a couple minutes, and I'm going to ask little Jeremiah, wherever he is. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, where is little Jeremiah? He might have fell asleep. Come on, Jeremiah. Little Jeremiah. He's just, we got Jeremiah when he was five. He's nine. Come on, give God some praise for Jeremiah. Little guy, stand up straight, young man. And um, Jeremiah is going to bless our offering. And he's going to say it the way God gives it to him. Right, Jeremiah? Right. We talked about it, right? He's going to take his mask down. Take your mask down. Say hi to him, Jeremiah. Turn around and say hi to the... To the say hello, everyone. Hello. Jeremiah's going to pray. Can y'all say, hey, Jeremiah? Man, we've watched this little boy do it all. Just hold it, Brother Houston. Just hold it for him. He, we, don't want, no, we don't want him touching that yet. <laughs> we don't want, yeah. Brother Houston's going to stand there and hold it for him because he got to take the mic. And we got to start him off young. Jeremiah goes to Watson Elementary. He's a third grader. Come on, give it up for Watson Elementary. Right around the corner where the, where the piece of hut is. Been watching Jeremiah grow up, and I'm going to let him bless this, our offering. Thank 
you, Lord, for all the blessings that we have received. We humbly ask that you watch and protect all of us and the things we do. And we dare to dream. We will always dream. Thank you, God. God bless everyone in the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God some praise for Jeremiah. And we could ask right now, really quickly, we're going to do a special presentation. Our, our um, sister staple is going to come up real quick. And we're going to ask Sister, uh, um, sister Sherman if she'll just come real quick. But real quick, we're going to do something. we got to get these guys out of here, Brother Houston. Get them on the road because he's got to work um, tonight and they got a long trip ahead. God bless you, Sister Brandy. We love you and we're just journey here in such short notice and um god just used you just just pray god's blessings over you just as you continue to walk you all walk together um on this journey and um just god's blessings this is a little token from a, a big heart and um i just pray that it'll bless you in a special way and we love you i love you <laughs> We're going to ask Minister Sherman, he will come down real quickly here. We can't thank you enough for what you did. Come on, y'all, give God some praise for man. What a great man of God, man. And I'm going to ask him something. It's already being confirmed. Minister Sherman is going to be here preaching Sunday, June 18th for Father's Day. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> man, is that all right, Sister Sherman? I'm sorry, we should have checked with the missus first. But don't worry, I'm gonna clear the we're gonna clear the path because I know he got something to say to all the men and all the fathers. So man, and all to the women too. He's gonna come back. Is that all right? Come on, give God some praise. June 18th, he'll be back. And man, we praise God for him. All of our graduates, you can go back and get dressed, and all of our special guests, if you can go back and line up. Um, and I want to do a special presentation for Minister Sherman. We have um, where is his um, can you bring that up, Sister um, Vitra? Yeah. Sister Vitra, stay right there. Give it to Jeremiah. Where's little Jeremiah? We could. Come on, go. Come on, Jeremiah. There you go, son. Stand right there. Stand next to him. Come on, Jeremiah. I'll take this. Get Brother Houston that. This is a small token from Brother Houston. I want to give that from the church to you, Brother Sherman. Brother Houston, you want to give him that first? The envelope. We're a church that's still learning, so pray for us. We're learning. We're growing. Amen. I take this. To Minister Marcus Sherman, you're wondering, I want to tell you as I was preparing this, it just says Mount Zion Mission about the Certificate of Appreciation, Dare to Dream, to Minister Marcus Sherman. And we're giving him this. If you're wondering why it's adorned with these colors, because in the African-American tradition that black is the struggle and what we've had to go through, the green is for the growth that we have seen, but the white is for the God that has been carrying you through, my brother. And it's interesting, I, I tried, me and sister, we tried to get it to wrap a certain color. But guess what? God said, leave it wrapped the way it is because that's Marcus's journey. <laughs> Y'all just missed that. Y'all missed that. Catch, catch me next Sunday on that one. It's wrapped this way because God wrapped Minister Marcus that way. So Minister Marcus, on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, I'm going to have Jeremiah present this to you. Both hands, son. Both hands. There you go. Come on over here. We're teaching Jeremiah. Give that to him. Thank you, Jeremiah. Now, 
Mark is a part of our tradition, so when he comes back, he'll be decked out. Part of our African-American tradition is that when you come and you have done as the great ancestors, Mother Birdie, could you raise your hand? Mother Birdie, sweet, 96 years old. The old she's the mother of our church, and I would have her come up, but I'm not going to bother 96. In our tradition, what we would do is we would put this on individuals, if you'll take this, Jeremiah. Brother Houston, since he's the, ex, the other oldest. Come on, Brother Houston. Come on, give God some praise. He's got to go to his beautiful wife, Sister Brandy. We can bring you up real quick. Snap a picture of them, too. We don't. We want to miss them. What a beautiful couple they are. We thank God for them. Snap a picture of them. Love you guys. Thank God for them. He's getting some, a quick picture of them because they've got to get on the road. I'm going to say it quick. Father God in heaven, we pray for traveling mercy, traveling grace for my brother and my sister, God. I pray, God, that you bless them, anoint them, God. I pray right now you dispatch your best and brightest angels all about them, God. When they put right now, God, even when they turn the key, God, we pray that all is safe for them, God. We pray that when he even gets to his destination, God, that you'll make the job smooth for him tonight. We thank you for his beautiful first lady and wife, God, Sister Brandy, God, for coming down here, God. And God, we are so excited and we're standing on tiptoes of anticipation patient we can't wait for june the 18th god where he blesses us once again god we give you praise honor and glory because you are an awesome god and god we thank you that brother marcus continue to dare to dream in god's in jesus name everyone said together amen and amen amen we're gonna get ready for our graduates we got to get you on the road brother brother Houston. Right. We're going to now prepare for our graduates. We can get all the parents. Karen, you need to be back with your son. You got to walk him up. All parents, and we can get all our special guests. If you can guys go back, we're going to escort you. And now we're going to get ready for our Dare to Dream planting seeds of hope, and we're going to ask all of them to march in. Yeah. All right. We got all of our guests back there. And man, are we super excited. Where's my list, brother? I need a list. Brother Grizz, give me a list real quick. We're going to get, man, we are super, super excited. Sister Stable's going to bless these, our young people. Come on, give God some praise for our special guests. And we won't, we won't keep you long. We're daring to dream. We're doing something we've never done before, but we are excited by God. And just a vision that God has given me, man, are we so excited. And our young people are about to come in, and we are super, super excited for them. But I want to, uh, first, I want to ask that the special guests will come up first. In graduations, we, were, we are blessed here. The faculty would always come in, process first, and they're gonna, I'm gonna, without the music, Brother Grace, we're gonna save the music for our young people. But if I could have um, uh, Mrs. Ricky Prickett come in first, Ricky Prickett, praise God for her. She is the director of the Learning Land Daycare and Preschool. I'm gonna have her stand right there. And I'm gonna ask, next to her is Mrs. Um, Rebecca Brown. Praise God. Give God some praise for them. I'm sorry. Rebecca Rowe, I'm sorry. Next, um, we have from um, JN Elementary School, Principal Scott Morris. I'll have him come in as well. I'm going to have him on. I'm going to have you guys on this side. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get, slide you all the way down. I'm have Principal Brown next to you right there, sir. Yeah. And we're going to be ready. Perfect. And now we're going to ask um, Principal James Green of Fairmont Senior. Give God some praise for him. Uh, Assistant Principal Melvin was out. So we will be ready for our graduates as they come. I'm going to put him right here. Perfect. And then we're going to have um, the present. Man, we are so blessed at Mount Zion, man. Guys, we have 
You all have heard of the Board of, Edu the Board of Education. We have the president. We are blessed by God to have the president of the Board of Marion County Education. Give it up for Sister Mary Jo Thomas. Man, and I asked them to wear their regalia for you too, so I thank God for them. I'm going to put her right there next to the principal. And man, we're super, super, super blessed. Super blessed. We have before us, God, man, she's only been here a year, and man, has she done awesome things. Great woman of God, a great superintendent. We have Dr. Donna Haig, who is, going to, is our superintendent of Marion County Schools. Give God some praise for her. We thank God for her. Man, we thank God for her. I'm going to put her right next to the president right there. I'm going to put you on the right-hand side. There you go. And so we, we're doing this for a reason. President is a rhyme to our reason. And we're, we are super, super excited. Mr. Staples is going to announce we'll put our first graduate up. I believe our first graduate is going to be Mr. Cortez. Don't come up yet. We got marching music. And Grandma, if you're there and you want to march with him, his, oh, Grandma's taping. Now, I should have known. Grandma's taping. Grandma's taping. And we're going to take our time. Let me say this. Here's how we do it at Mount Zion. You are loved by God more than anything. God will put the brakes on it, Marcus. He will stop the press. And that's what we do at Mount Zion. We believe because we are a church about the people of God and the people who want to be people of God, and we want to bless them. God will do all of those things. And we're blessed because we have little Cortez who's coming, who's just preschool, four years old, going to be going to kindergarten. Then we have the kindergartner going to first grade, all the way down to the masters where you'll see someone be hooded today by myself and superintendent um, hey, so we are so excited to have them on today. So we're now going to have the grand entrance uh, of them right now. Music. This time we have our graduate Cortez Maurice Sanders being escorted by his mother Whitney Eccles. Amen. Our next graduate is Alan Jonathan Coney, preschool, being escorted by his mother, Janice. Amen. God bless you. And we have our next graduate, William Ashton Shelton, kindergarten being escorted by his mother, Karen, and father, Robert Shelton. God bless you. Amen. Our next graduate is Ajene Janor Copey, our high school graduate, being escorted by Grandmother Joyce Harris and Paris. Amen. And our next graduate is Tian Lamar Jewel, a high school graduate being escorted by Sister Gail and Brother Proctor. And our next graduate is Jaden Tyrese Moore, our high school graduate, being escorted by Tyrone Moore. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Fred.
you'll excuse me if I stay right here by the camera and do that part of my job. Our next two graduates. Louder. Oh, uh, louder. Can you turn me up back in the back? Okay, how's that? Better? Okay, our, our next graduate is Jalon Marche Staples, graduating from Fairmont State, escorted by his mother, Geronda, and his father, Pastor Dr. Mark Staples. And they have to do double duty, so we'll give them time to get to the back again for their eldest child. <laughs> Uh-oh, I might be in trouble. Our next and final presentation today is Ms. Nia Markayla Staples, graduating from the Pennsylvania State University and escorted by her mother, Geronda, and her father, Pastor Dr. Mark Staples. Give them a round of applause. Who gets the mic next? You, okay. We are extremely excited. Come on, give God some praise. Man, we are excited. Man, that God uh, would allow us to all meet and I want to go back once again, if you don't mind, Brother Griggs. Let's go back to our three virtual graduates. That's Dejiel. I want to go back because I want to acknowledge them. Let's stop and pray. Dejiel, Jordan, Elizabeth Davis, all the way from Connecticut. Let's give God some praise. Let's tap her on the screen. Show her on the screen, Sister Griggs. She's all the way in Connecticut. Couldn't be with us here today. She is the granddaughter of Sister Patricia Thomas. Next graduate is also virtual with us. We hope they're watching today. My next graduate, Brother Griggs, after DGL, Jared Zion Madley. He is also all the way from Texas. They've been visiting with us. Also, Sister Smith's grandson, and we thank God for him, for his mom and dad. That's Brother Earl and Sister Rebecca Mattingly. They're out of Houston, Texas, but they've been visiting here with us since I've been pastor. So we're celebrating them as well today, too. So big shout out for our Texas family. Give God some praise for them. And he has a twin duo brother. They are twins. His brother Zane, give me that look, Zane. Zane Christian Madeline, we thank God for him. Also, out of Houston, Texas, we praise God for them. Thank God for them so much. And man, are we super, super excited. And on today, on today, we're just here to celebrate each and every one of our graduates. And today, I'm going to let Brother Griggs, our music is. I think we're done, Brother Griggs. Thank you. Come on, give God some praise. We're going to be quick here. We thank God for, again, for those who have come from the news team and all of them. We're going to just really quickly want to take time out to acknowledge. Man, we are excited. We've never had a preschool graduate from our church, and we are so happy. We got two of them today. We have first coming up, and we're going to present to him. And I happen to have his principal here, his director. I'm going to slide Mr. Morris down and bring up his teacher and director. They're going to present little Cortez. If you'll come up, Cortez. Come on, give God some praise for Cortez. We're going to show. Look, he grabbed her hand, so you know that's his principal and his teacher. Can I have the certificate? For each one of our graduates, they're right there in the front with the white. There you go. Thank you, Brother Griggs. Brother Houston, I'll take that. For Jeremiah, I think someone's phone keeps going off. There we go. Cortez, Maurice, Sanders, we, on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, on this day, the 22nd of May in the year of 2022, the members of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church celebrate your successful completion of preschool, <laughs> adapting and persevering in spite of COVID-19. With God, all things are possible. I'm going to bring his principal out, or director, she'll come out with me. And we're going to stand down, and we're going to, but he don't let her go, will he? Man, that's pretty good. Man, I wish people do me like that, boy. We're going to let her hold that right there, and I'm going to pull it down so we can take a snap of him with his principal and with his pastor. 
And we're now going to ask that mom will come up and grandma and stand with us and with. Also, we're blessed to have this, his superintendent, because I found out from Brother Houston that Dr. Hagee covers all, a whole lot of territory. So I make sure we get Dr. Hagee in the picture with them. Oh, there's grandma. Put grandma on there. There you go. Wonderful. There you go. Can you snap that picture? Turn around this way, Cortez. There you go. So they can snap you. Look right ahead. Look ahead. Look ahead. There you go. Cheese. There you go. We're so excited. Come on. Give God some. Yes. Yes, I'll jump on the other side. Now, this is no ordinary because remember, the church, remember, Marcus preached, dare to dream. The church has never been ordinary. God's people are extraordinary. And we do extraordinary things. We give God the praise. We're going to let you. We have two more gifts for you. Jeremiah, where's Jeremiah? Jeremiah grabbed me his gift bag. Where's Jeremiah? Come on, Jeremiah, get his gift bag. Remember, I was telling you, we're working it. We're working it. Stay right there, son. We have several things for you. It's a little bag up under the table. We have some wonderful gifts for you. Jeremiah will bring that. Sister Staples will come and present to you. Brother Houston has a gift for you. He's going to present first, Brother Houston. Oh, boy. Come on. Let's go, Sister Staples. Jeremiah will give the gift. Come on, Jeremiah. Give him the gift. Take your hands out the pocket, son. There you go. Be ready. All righty. Come on, Jeremiah. You're going to present the gift to Cortez. You're welcome. Thank you, Jeremiah. Go get your next one ready, Jeremiah. Wonderful, wonderful. We're waiting on Brother Houston. We have a gift for each one of our graduates. Thank you so much, principals and administrators, for being so precious. And I want to make sure. Just hold that, Mom. Just stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. You're good. You're good. Let's give that. We gave. I told Brother Houston, don't write the young kids a check. Give them the cash. Is that right? <laughs> so they can go to the candy store or go to the Walmart and buy the thing of their choice. There's. I'm going to give you a chance to get them in order. Let's go. Come on. Next one. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Praise God for him. You want to stand in? Come on, Brother Houston. Turn around. They're trying to get your picture. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. We're done. Cortez, the most important thing, excuse me, Brother Houston, the most important thing that the church could ever give any young person is the word of God. I wish I had some help here today. The word of God. Most important thing we can give. We have this. I'm going to take this off, Cortez, because your name has been signed by Sister Staples and put my name in it. We want to give you, man, the most important thing that we can give any young child. Don't get me wrong. The ABCs are great. Arithmetic is great. But the word of God is going to sustain you forever and ever and ever. When people aren't nice, man, there's great stories in here for you to learn. So pastor is going to present you with the word of God. You're welcome, son. You're welcome. Thank you so much. We're done with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have you sit right there, Cortez. Next up, our next graduate is none other than little Alan. Come on up, little Alan. Little Alan, he's going to come. And Alan, though I was not able to get in touch, Alan Connie, he is a super, we love his mom. Alan, I'm going to let you pre help me to present Alan with his certificate. Alan is a preschooler as well. And um, I wasn't able to catch him because they were going to be out of town, such as Staples. On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church on this day, Alan, Jonathan, Coney, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church wants to congratulate you on your successful completion of preschool. Come on, you all. You did it, Alan. And by the way, on yesterday, Alan had a super fun birthday party at uh, Jumping Jacks. Or what is it called again? Lunch Pass. I knew it was something you jump on. But boy, were they jumping. And man, Dare to Dream, Planting Seeds of Hope. Here you go, Brother Allen. We're going to present that to you, my friend. Great smile. And, man, I'm not sure where is he going to be at school next year, Mom? Pleasant Valley. And I think she covers Pleasant Valley, too. And our board director, too. I'm going to squeeze you guys in closer. Let's sneak a picture with him real quick. Come on in, you guys in closer. Preschool. Yep. And Mom. Come on up, Mom. Come on in. I'm going to use again. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. Wonderful. We got the superintendent, board president. Man, we got the preschool family. And this is awesome. 
And we appreciate you guys being so patient. They want me. Man, that's good to be wanted. It's good to be wanted. Oh, Grandma's here. Man, come on, Grandma. Come on, Grandma. Someone can hold that. Let one of the kids hold that, Grandma. Come on, Grandma. She won't hold him. Yes. His grip is next. His presentation of his gift by Jeremiah. Mom will hold that. Jeremiah is presenting you your gift. Jeremiah was his angel buddy. They played angels in last year's Christmas. There you go with you. Give him a hug, Jeremiah. Ah, uh, hold on. Man, he's ready to go bust it into the gifts. And we got one from Brother Houston as well. Yes, that's him. Praise God. You want to turn around, Brother Houston, and jump in with us. There you go. All in. There you go. We appreciate you all being so patient, man. This, they will never forget this because you know what? You only graduate from preschool one time. I hope that's right, Sister Gail. One time. One time. Last but not least, Sister Staples, Alan, she has watched you so much. I'm going to have the first lady of our church give God some praise for her. She's going to kneel down and present you, Alan, with your Bible. Man, are you going to enjoy that one? She loves you. She loves the little kids. Man, hold on, one, Alan. We're going to get one snap of picture. Man, he's ready to go. We're going to snap a picture with you. Pastor going to get down with you. We got it. We love you, Alan. Praise God for you. You got your gift, man. Man, we're super, super excited. We're now going to bring up, thank you so much. We're going to bring up our, our first high school person, and that's um, Ajene. I think that's right, Ajene. Oh, almost forgot. How could we forget? Look at, you know what? I almost forgot, but I want to now, I want to announce. No, oh, she's not next. He's next. We want to announce now our kindergartner graduating from kindergarten all the way to first grade from JN, none other than William Ashton Shelton. Come on up here. You know what I love about that? I was almost going to Ajene, but he stood up and said, no, Mom, I'm next. I'm next. I love that about, I love that about, I love that. He's going to be great when he gets to the high school. He's going to be great. I love him, and I love his parents, grandma. I know she's watching, Sister Pryor. Man, he got super great parents. Man, we're so happy. His certificate, man, he has played the angel a couple times. He, we even put this little boy in the, in, the, in the manger, and his principal here, I love this principal. It's Principal Morris, and he's a friend of mine. I love him. Come on, give God some praise for Principal Morris. And I'm going to give this to Principal Morris. We're going to present this to him together and and we got the superintendent and the board director you guys squeeze in close look up ashton we're gonna look at you and grab a grab a picture of you there you go and we praise god ashton has done everything we've asked him. gonna bring mom and dad up real quick to join in man he's got a great mom and dad and he's got a big sister who's always watching come here where, wherever she is she might be come here on come on up here big sister his big sister who has left JN and is now at the middle school. So we're going to bring him up one. The family that prays together stays together. Man, we appreciate that. Come on, bring principal in. I'm going to jump on the other side and kneel down by you. We all have one more presentation. Brother Houston has something. Jeremiah has first. Come on, Jeremiah. Jeremiah has a gift for you. He said, thank you. Wow, that's awesome. Give him a hug, Brother Jeremiah. Give him a big hug. That was Jeremiah's angel buddy for the last two years. They played the angel and a couple different things for us. So we thank God for them. Brother Houston has a gift for you too, Ashton. That's yours, he said. Amen. And we made sure that you could get it to the, you don't have to wait for mom and dad to sign the back of it. We made it cash for you. Is that all right? Because we dare to dream. We love you, Ashton. Hope we got one more thing. Man, we really love Ashton. Sister Staples has been one of his teachers as well as his mom. We want to present you, Ashton, now. We're going to take, get mom this. You can trust mom. There you go. 
We're going to present you, Ashton, with the word of God. Because, Ashton, you're getting older in age now. And we're praying that eventually you're going to give your life to the King of kings, Lord of lords. And so we're praying for you, man. You're going to do great things. And, man, you got a great principle. I'm going to have his principle to kneel down with me. Come on, principle. There we go. We're going to come down, and we just give God the praise for him. Got everybody in. We thank God for Principal Morris, and, man, we're so happy for you. Thank you, son. Thank you so much. There you go. All right. You got everything? Oh, man, it's a lot of stuff, isn't it? God is good. Only in the church, man. Only in the church. We praise God. We're going to let you sit right there. We're going to quickly. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. Thank you. Come on. Praise God for this family. Praise God for him. Thank you guys for being so patient. We're going to bring up our, our, our high schoolers real quick. Now we have, we're ready for Ajene. Come on up, Ajene. And I'm going to bring Principal Green and drop him right here in the middle. I think you know this fella, don't you? You know him. I'm going to have you pull it down a little bit. You can, you're, you're good. I, want, um, I didn't get a chance um, before I do, um, Principal, um, I, I, I do want Principal Morris, anything? Just excited and that you made me part of this today. Um, to be part of the journey to go along with the message today. I'm just a small part of the student uh, journey across that bridge, but I'm happy to be here and happy to be part of that journey. So thank you. We're excited. I meant to say that. And I, too, am very excited to be here. I was so happy when Mr. Staples came and asked me to do this, and I could not say no because I love Cortez so much, and he has done so well. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. We're now going to turn it over to, man, I, I got a chance to meet Mr. Green one time, and man, is he him. And man, I tell you, boy, I tell you, we had some great stories, and I thank God for him. And he's going to say some words to Ajene and to the other graduates. He has three here today. So, Principal Green. Very grateful that you chose to invite me to this ceremony. Uh, these kids mean the world to me. Uh, being a principal at a high school, you see a lot of kids, but when they finally, as we talked about or heard today, get to the bridge and start moving across the bridge and go through their journeys, and it's an amazing experience, and I appreciate all of them for being here and inviting me. Thank you. Ajene, I think, um, where's Sister Sharon? Where is she at, Sister Sharon? There you go. Sister Sharon, she, we thank God because you can pull down a little bit, Ajene. What a beautiful name. Ajene Janora Copney. Come on, give it up for her, guys. She's high school. Ajene's ready to move on. Man, come on, Ajene, give us that big smile, girl. You're, you're graduating in a couple days. So we praise God for her. We have a certificate for you. We made our high schoolers different this year, Brother Jeremiah. We thank God for you. And we are, we are praying for you. It says, on behalf of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, uh, we celebrate you on this day, May 22nd, um, for your completion of high school. Come on, give it up. Y'all remember, anybody remember high school? Man, it was just, I know, just, just the other day, it seems like. And um, also successfully maneuvering yourself through COVID-19. With God, all things are possible. And, man, because you're a graduate, we made a special ribbon for you, and we put our fancy, fancy, fancy Mount Zion pen for when you got to sign checks and do all kinds of other business stuff. Now that you're grown, almost. There you go. You both smile on that as I smile. We're going to present this. Me and the principal are going to present this to you. We also have Jeremiah has the gift for you. We hope that you'll enjoy. Jeremiah wants to present you with a gift from the Mount Zion family. We thank God for you and for the journey and the great bridges that you're going to cross. But at like Mount Zion, we are also God's called the people of God to be bridge makers too. So we pray that you'll build some bridges and you'll cross a lot of bridges in your life. And we thank God for you. But most importantly, Brother Houston has a, a, another special gift for you as well, Ajene.
And we're going to ask Joyce Copeland, Grandma, where is she at? I think she's in the house. Grandma, can you come up? Where is she at? Come on, Grandma. I almost didn't see you there. Man, I thought she was one of the students back there. Come on, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. Give Grandma a hug. I'm sorry, Grandma. Come on, give God some praise for Grandma being here. Nothing like Grandma being there. Want to get snap a picture with them. We thank God for Grandma. And last but not least, Sister Staples, we want to present you, Sister Staples, you present to her. We can't do anything um, but wish you the very, very best, Ajene. We give you the word of God, which is lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. And so that's what we pray, that God will light your path. And he will, he, will, he will guide your feet. So we thank God for you, and we're just going to snap a picture with you and Grandma. We praise God. Thank you, sis. Thank you so much. Our next graduate, I think, is, is Tion. Tion. Tion Lamar Jews. Give God some praise for him. I'm going to ask those who are with him if they'll come up, too, and join him who's with Tion. Tion is also, I want to say, Tion, I saw the most coolest picture of him. I thought it was, I didn't know if it was Shaquille or no, whatever, but he had these rings. Uh, I, see that picture, y'all? Zoom in. We can't zoom in close, but don't he look handsome, y'all? Handsome fella. Bro, and you guys know, if he going to hang with Brother Proctor, he going to be sharp. Brother Proctor has come up to be with him and Sister Gail, and we thank God for you. I think, am I right, Tion, you've, you've helped the school to win three state champion football. Is that right? Come on, y'all. Give up to God some praise. He, I wish you had one of those rings. Where I'm, where I'm on Father's Day for me, because you do that for me. Come and join us. Man, because he got rings. And, man, I saw I said, man, are those rings that I'm seeing? We praise God for you. And he's got another compadre right behind him. We thank God for Tion for what God's going to do. And we pray that wherever God's going to, he's going to send you where you need to be. I think we have a certificate to give you. On behalf of the principal and I, we're going to give this to you, Tion. And we're so grateful for you and for what God is doing in your life. I'm going to kneel down. Brother Jeremiah has a gift for you as well, Tion. A small token of our appreciation for the Mount Zion family. And we appreciate you and we're praying for you. I'm praying that God will place you where you need to be. Brother Houston has a gift and then Sister Staples will have the final gift for you. Wow, brother. That's what I love about Brother Proctor. Brother Proctor had one in his envelope, man, in his pocket. Thank you so much. Wow. Praise God. And the most important gift we can give, as we've heard eloquently from the preacher par excellent, Minister Marcus Sherman, future pastor, Man, there's nothing that we can give you other than the best gift of them all. This may fade. The ribbon may fall off. The bag may be thrown in the trash, but the word of God will sustain you in the toughest of times. So we give you this as our gift from the Mount Zion Missionary Back. We got all the friends. You got the picture. Did you get Sister Gail in the picture? Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Tion. Thank you. Our last um, high school graduate before we leave, guys, we want to bring up now Jaden Tyrese Moore. Come on, Jaden. I'm going to bring up. Where's dad? Where's, where's, where's uncle? Where is he at? Where is he at? Come on. Come on, brother Tyrese. Yeah. Uncle, right? Dad. There you go, dad. Come on, dad. That's it. Come on, right next to each other now. Come on in, Tyrese. Yes, glide in close. Man, we praise God. He is also a three-time state champion. Is that right? Also, track team did pretty well down in states as well. So we praise God. And I believe that this young man will be Air Force bound. Is that correct? Come on, praise God for him. He's going to be going to the Air Force. We praise God for him, for his dad. Man, two handsome fellas. Get the autograph now before it gets to be too expensive. Man, he looks handsome. Man, love that smile on you. On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, me and your principal, Principal Green, will present you. And also, we have the superintendent and the Board of, and the board of Education right next to us. We present this to you on this day, Jaden Tyrese Moore, 
the appreciation, I mean, actually, it's the certificate of completion of high school. Congratulations, my friend. And we're going to, we have another gift. Jeremiah has another gift for you as well. And I believe Brother Houston has another gift as well. Praise God. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise for them. We thank God for him. Thank you, man. Stay for the last picture. We're going to be real quick. We do have Tion. Thank you, Brother Tion. We got it. And most importantly, God bless. Sister Staples wants to give you the word of God. Man, so when you're, when you're flying, whatever you decide to do, fly with God, man. He'll take your heights in places you've never seen before, man. Trust God. I'm going to give you the word. Stand on the side of you and dad. Come on, give God some praise. Come on. Thank you, guys. Pull out your iPhone. Pull out your iPhone. Last but not least, we want to real quickly, um, we're going to celebrate our last two. We have a college graduate on Jalan Staples. Come on up, Jalan. Just leave that there. That's fine. We, we are, we are going to put Jalan here, and I'm going to switch and put the board president here because the board president is also the president of the Fairmont State Alumni Association. So we got something else to sit, just sit, sit up there. It's good. I'll take it. And I'm going to allow Mrs. Mary Jo to say something before we start. We are extremely proud of this young man. He had an illustrious career at Fairmont State, and his journey really is just beginning. We're so proud of him, and we certainly hate to lose you. I got to participate in his commencement a uh, few days ago now, it seems like, but so very proud of him. We're so proud, too, that he's a product of Marion County Schools and the young man that is going to the Air Force. Uh, my brother is a retired colonel from the Air Force, my other brother, Marine, my husband, Army, my dad, Navy. We miss the Coast Guard, but I'm too old to go. But we appreciate you with your, that you've dedicated yourself to serving the country. This young man has dedicated himself to serving the Lord and a lot of others in the way. It's been my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. And Houston and several other, other of us in the congregation have stood side by side for different things for education in Marion County and hope to continue to do so. Good luck to you. Your future's bright. Thank you, Jeremiah. We present Jalan with this. Where is uh, Vitro? In the back. Um, can you give me that, Vitro? In the back, Jalan, on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Jalan also won, um, and yes, he is, uh, Pastor, but Jalan also was the homecoming king, part of BSU. Man, he did a lot of great things. Give God some praise for him. Did a lot of things. For the last two years, he's done our, he's um, had to do Facebook and all of the other things for dad. And man, he has um, weathered the storm, being with me, uh, demanding all the things of him. So we thank God for him. It's the, the big plaque the back. 
So Jeremiah has a gift for you. And if you'll come up on this side, feature with that, yes, left side. And we're going to make myself and board president, we're going to make, because I think it's important as a young kid growing up in the inner city, we want, there is a distinction when you finish high school. When you graduate college, your degree is no longer diploma. I'm going to ask no other than Mrs. Thomas if she will help me to present this to Jalan on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. It is the Fairmount State. Yes. I'm going to ask his mom, come on, Sister Staples, if you'll come up as well and jump in with us. She'll jump in. We are so proud of him, and he will be on his way. As a matter of fact, we're driving him off today for internship. We praise, praise God for him. It says, Fairmont State, uh, son, Brother Houston has a gift for you. He was carrying that, but we wanted to surprise him and give him that. Brother Houston has a gift. Amen. We love you. Jalan is a twin. He, stay right here, Sister Staples. He is a twin. He comes six minutes after Nia. Actually, and Nia claims to claim the fame to be the first, <laughs> even though Jalan was the longest and the tallest and the heaviest. Six pounds, 12 ounces. Nia was only 5'14". But we praise God for you, but son, I, dad can't do, give you anything more. And I hope and pray that everything that I've given you, most importantly, I've given you Jesus. And so God is so proud of you, and I'm proud of you as your dad, and I love you, and present to you the word of God, and that he'll continue to guide you and keep you. Love you, son. And Miss Staples already whispered in my ear, we got to get him there. So we're going to take a picture real quick. We're going to sit, Jalan. I think we got, we got to give him everything he gets. Thank you, Brother Jalan. Last but not least, giving that to you. We're going to keep the board president, and I'm going, to, I'm going to keep the board president here and the superintendent. Last but not least, we've never done this before, but we're going to have our last graduate, Nia Staples, come. Come on, give God some praise for her on your sleeve. There you go. Nia. Nia, on your arm. There you go. I wanted to share this with the congregation. It's important that when you finish the bachelor's and you go and proceed the master's, back in the ancient times, they would put a robe on, and the hood was used after an apprentice had mastered what the apprentice had shown them. So Nia is carrying the hood because she received her master's in clinical rehabilitation, health, and counseling at the Penn State University. Congratulations, Nia. So before we give anything, in order to put the hood over her, you have to have someone with the stripes and the bars to do it. So I've asked Dr. Hagee if she would mind helping me to present Nia with this. We wanted our young people to see this and experience this in the event that you never go because God has great things. Sometimes, as Brother Marcus said, you have to see it 
sometimes to dare it. And when you dare it, you do so. Nia, we congratulate you on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Here is your certificate from the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Give God some praise for you on your accomplishment of graduate school. Nia will go on. Again, I'll take another picture with her. Come on, Mom. Nia and Mom have been through many hair braiding nights and all kinds of other talks together, and we praise God for them. Jeremiah has a gift for you, and Nia will also move on. She has an opportunity to she will go and play another year and work on another master's at UMBC of University of Maryland. I'm sorry, University of Maryland in Baltimore. So Nia will move on to continue on in her journey. And so we have her for another month. So we praise God for her. Nia, dad presents this to you. She is my Nia Badia. And I was singing the song Nia Badia. And I, my wife said, don't sing that one, but. I was singing, and Nia would always dance and let me take pictures of her. And this is from Dad, and Dad is so proud of you and your brother, Jalan, for all that you've done. And even though your feist is all get out sometimes, Dad loves you. And man, but I love you. And man, you get it from me, though. I appreciate you, and thank God. I'm looking forward to seeing you tear it up on the basketball court and also in the classroom. Love you. We would be remiss. Where is... Um, there, oh, her compadre, when you earn the master's, the degree changes. Nia, on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church and me and your mom, we just wanted to present you. You can sit that down. We're going to present you with this. I'm going to ask Dr. Hagee. We can just sit it down. I'm going to have Dr. Hagee to do the honors so it doesn't seem like his nepotism of presenting this to you. We thank God for you and for being a Penn State, the University of Penn State graduate master's program. Give God the praise, the glory, and the honor for that. <laughs> Ephesians 3 and 20 said, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh in us. Thank you, Nia. We're going to sit you down real quickly. Real quickly, I'm going to ask all of my uh, principals and guests if they'll just line up real quickly real here. And Vitra, if you'll quickly me, we want to give something very special to all of my guests. I'll line them up here real quickly. All of our guests. Yes, we got, we have her here. Yes, I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to bring you over. Perfect. There we go. We want to make a special presentation. And Jeremiah, if you can go back and help her and Sister Staples. We want to present to all of our presenters, and we're going to be done, we promise. Thank you, Brother Marcus. You didn't have to stay, man. I'm, I'm, I'm eternally grateful to you. We want to start with Miss Rebecca. Is it Becky? Am I getting it right? Rebecca. Tierra. Okay, we'll get And we all want to congratulate Tierra Gare, who was not here. Didn't get a picture of her, but we'll bring her here. Yeah. Can I have... Um, her name is Becky, assistant teacher. Can I have her real quickly? Yes, you stay there. Yes, there, Brandon. Come on, Jeremiah. A little quicker, Jeremiah. P pretend like you're at recess. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's recess walk. On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Miss Becky, I'm going to ask where he is. I'm going to ask Cortez if he will give this to you. Cortez, can you give this to Mrs. Becky? On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Cortez, turn around. Presents this to Miss Becky, his assistant teacher. Why does Cortez present? Because Miss Becky has given to him. Now it's time we teach Cortez to give back. Say amen, parents. Amen. Thank you, Cortez. You may be seated. The next presentation we want to give is to the director. Is to the director. Man, is she a great director, too. Man, I met her, and she was so willing. This is for Mrs. Prickett. She is the director of the Learning Land and Daycare and Preschool. I'm going to ask again. I'll take that. Again, we're going to ask Master Cortez. And I'm going to also ask his compadre. You both together will come up, and I want you both to present this. You take one half, and you take another. 
present this to the greatest director of all the world on all of Fairmont Avenue, turn around and give it to her. Yes, Mrs. Prickett, give God some praise. Stay there. Take a picture with her. Take a picture with her. Right there. Other side. There you go. There we go. Praise God for Mrs. Prickett for all that she has done. We're so grateful for her. Got that wonderful. <laughs> to Principal, I love all the middle schools, but I love me some Principal Morris because he took time out. He left his own church family just to come be with us. And I meant to tell you, even though I said noon, I did mean to tell you we are at the Black Baptist Church. So we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we do, we do go a little longer than the, the Catholic Church. Mr. Morris, I'm asking on behalf of Mr. Morris that my dear friend Ashton will come and present his principal with the award. You can sit your, man, I love Ashton. He's not letting his bag sit down for nothing. Let me just sit this down. There you go. Stand right there, and I want you to stand next to him and hold that with him. Wonderful. Isn't that awesome, guys? Making that presentation to his principal. That's what, this is how we do it in the church. Amen. And man, Ash, he gets Ashen for four more years, five more years. Thank you. We got him. The next presentation that we want to present to, to, um, to the principal of the high school, I want all my three high schoolers to come up and present this to Principal Green. And we're going to put it in the hands of Ashen A, since she seems to be the one who talks the most. I'm going to have you pull your mask down and... Ajene, who wants to be the spokesperson? One of y'all gonna say something to the principal. <laughs> Nobody wants to say nothing to the principal, Green. Jayden. Say some words, Jayden. Say some words. Uh, I just want to thank Mr. Green. He's an excellent principal after Mr. Uh, Ms. Fenimore left. And he just made Fairmont Senior feel like home. So thank you, Mr. Green. Stand and get a picture next to him, all three of you guys. We're going to put Ajene down here. Just down there. There we go. Perfect. Get them, all three of them. With the superintendent, of course, and the board president. Squeeze in board president. Thank God for our Marion County Board of Education. We praise God for them. Great work they're doing, and even greater works they shall do. All right. Stay there. Okay. Thank you so much, high schoolers. Man, we would be remiss. You have two more sashes in the back for me. Two more. Yes. I do want to just ask right now if, if the president of the board, and I'm, these are the last two and we're, we're done, you all, if you could just bear with us. I really want to thank God so much for Mrs. Thomas. Um, Mrs. Fenimore, I said, is there anyone that I could get in a week's notice on short, time, on short notice? And she said, my dear friend, Mrs. Thomas or Miss Colleen, so I just want to ask on behalf of the Mount Zion Mission Baptist Church, we want to give you this. I'm going to have, actually, want to have one of you guys who wants to give it to her. All three of the young boys, put your cap on. We're going to swarm. I want you guys to swarm her and give that to her. And I want you to kneel down and take a picture with her. Ah, ah come here, Sarah, right here. There you go. There you go, guys. I'm going to put you in there because you're blue. You got you right here. Wonderful. Isn't that cool? In closer, Ashton. In closer. Isn't that beautiful? Board president with the youngest. That's dare to dream because guess what? Man, once we get older, our time's going to go, and then guess what? It's going to be these little guys, and, man, we're going to be able to count on them. I love these three guys. Love them to death, and they're going to be do great things. Let them see your little smile there, Ash. Look at that smile. One, two. Get the picture. One, two, three. Parents, send those to me. Got it. Love you. This is why we do it. Amen. Man, we, and because Dr. Thomas, Mrs. Thomas said that, Ms. Thomas, on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church and the rights and privileges bestowed upon me in the African-American community, we bestow And I'm going to ask that Sister Lacey will come and help me on this one. Uh oh. Thank you. Um, years ago, my mother was secretary for the Council of Churches, and then it was Diamond Street. Then we were a 
part of life then. We were now we're gateway. But anyway, we're all in it together. And with the church league basketball and all the different things, but the Council of Churches makes it all happen. And we are all in this together. And we're all working for the same thing. God bless you all. And thank you for this great honor. I'm bringing her here because I'm going to bring Brother Houston as well because can you raise your hand, Mother Birdie? And I'm going to ask a special favor. Um, could you help Mother Birdie? Give me a chair real quick, man. I'm going to do something that's historic. Give me a chair real quick and give me Mother Birdie. Mother Birdie, before Mrs. Thomas put it right here, I want this picture because our young people need to understand that Sister Lacey and Brother Houston were able to go to the high school, but Mother Birdie is 96, and we're putting her here because back then the laws did not permit for African Americans and children that were white to be together. But we're bringing up Mother Birdie, the mother of our church, who's 96 years old, who represents our church, who is a tremendous woman of God. And I'm going to sit her right here. Because truly, we're saving the special presentation for her on our church 120th. But I want to sit Mother Birdie right here. I love it. She said, okay, Pastor, I'll sit here. And I do that because give God some praise for Mother Birdie. The reason why we brought Mother Birdie here is because all the steps that she took is so you could sit where you sit. You missed that. I'm going to say that again. All those steps that Mother Birdie took is so that you and I can sit where we sit, where we can sit together, like King said, all of God's children. Okay. Now I'm going to ask Brother Houston. I'm going to bring you up here, Brother Houston. And the reason why I have Brother Houston and Sister Lacey, because they attended the old, the old, before Fairmont became senior over there, they attended the one that was... Dunbar. Anybody from Dunbar? The reason why I have them because they serve as the historians and the patriarchs and the shoulders that even the pastor stands on. So I'm going to ask them to bestow upon you the authentic kente cloth from our tradition that's bestowed unto you so that you are able to get into our churches anytime you want to. Just wear that. And you will be in. If you'll level that up, and I'm going to have him get that picture. We have one last thing, the flowers. Sister Staples, or Vitra, get them fast. Get, them, get both of them while you're at it, Vitra. The last thing, our first lady wants to present to you, we would not be remiss to have the board president. We would not be, re we'd be remiss to give you one last thing. In the African-American tradition, our church says, give people their flowers while they're living. So we have flowers for you. Those are one. Sister Staples, that's it, that one. The first one, Sister Staples. The other one. The other one. There you go. First lady of our church, give God some praise. She will present this to you on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We appreciate you, President Board, Board of Marion County Schools. We appreciate you and thank God for you. We are just, I'm going to get a snap a picture with them all together with the superintendent. Snap that picture together. That is history. I'm going to have Mother Birdie. You got Mother Birdie in there? They got you, Mother Birdie. They're looking that way. They're looking ahead. Thank you, Mother Birdie. Oh. Thank you. Give God some praise. Our last presentation will be done. I'm going to move the... Board director here. No, stay here, Mother Birdie. Stay here. Stay right there. Stay right there, like the song said. We would be remiss. Dr. Hagee, if you'll come and stand right here. Sister Lacey, if you'll stay with us. We are super honored today. We have the superintendent of the Marion County Schools. Give God some praise. We thank God for her taking time out of her busy schedule. She is a superintendent. She oversees, Brother Houston said, a whole lot of schools. And we thank God for her. And we present you with the certificate from Jeremiah from this school, Jeremiah will present that to you. On behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, we appreciate you. 
And if you understand, her ribbon is intertwined. Notice how it's intertwined. It has the green, the black, and the gold, the, because there will be struggles in the school board. There will be growth, but God is always in the midst of all of it. And so that ribbon, that's what, whenever you see that, you'll always think of Mount Zion and what he's doing and what God is doing and the life of this place and in the life of all this. And the same for yours as well, too. We thank God for you. Praise God for you. We also have the sash for you as well. I have Sister Lacey there. Me and Sister Lacey will present this to you on behalf of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you to you, Dr. Hagee. We present this to you on behalf of our church and our church family, and we thank God for you and for your being here today. We pray that whenever you are adorning yourself here, and we pray we'll see you again on this time next year. Can you pull your mask so they can snap a picture of you? Snap a picture of her with Brother Houston and with Mother Birdie, the history of our church, the mother of our church. We praise God for her. Last but not least, we have the flowers, the presentation from our first lady, Sister Staples. We appreciate you. Thank God for you and all that you've done for us, to us, and we appraise God for you. Thank God for you and taking time out. Going to squeeze all of our administrators in. Come on up, young people. I'm going to have y'all squeeze down. Last picture, and we're going to say a prayer and get y'all out of here. I know it's time to eat dinner, right? Amen. Come on. All my little guys, stand here next to Mother Birdie. I want you to kneel down right here. Come on, little guys. Come on. All my, all my graduates, all my graduates. Jalan, you guys can walk up. Graduates, if you want to, come on up in the pulpit if you want to, or you can kneel down, whichever you like. You can stand right here, a couple of you guys, if you're tall, if you want to. Jalan, you got to come in. You and Nia got to come in on this side. Come in tighter, much tighter. There you go. You got to kneel down, guys. Y'all too tall. So, Tion, if you want to come over here, you're tall. We can put you over here. Stand up here. You can, we can put you guys up here. Just stand up here. Come on. Come on, stand up here, guys. Come on, Jalan, up here. They need to squeeze you in tight. Nia, come on in. There you go. Move in tight. They can't see you. Come up here, Jalan. Come up here. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up there. There we go. You got them all. Is that a good picture? Can you get them all? If not, we can move you up. We'll move you up and move you in. How about that? How about that? Is that better? Almost forgot. Minister Marcus, since he's still here, come on up here and stand in the pulpit. Minister Mar come on, praise God, Minister Marcus. We're going to have him right here. Boy, did he bless us today. We're going to have him stand front and center on the stage up here. Put him right here in the center. Thank you, Minister Marcus. And I could ask the principals, if you could just pull your mask so they can snap one quick picture. If you could pull it down, just I'm praying God's blessings. Dare to dream. Benediction by Minister Sherman. Father God, once again, you, you are so tremendously worthy. We, we just thank you, Father God, for just the service today. We thank you for these young people. We're asking, Lord God, once again, that you would just go before them. Lord God, just ordaining, Father God, and ordering, Lord God, their every step. Father God, we just thank you for your grace, your mercy, Father God. We just thank you for being just, just, just a, a phenomenal and very big presence, Father God, in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for loving us, Father God, even when we didn't deserve it. Father God, go before each and every family, Father God, praying that just everybody has a phenomenal, safe, and very productive week. In your son Jesus Christ's name, Father God, we pray. Amen. Thank you, virtual family. See you next Sunday, 11 a.m. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to go to the back and shake all y'all's hands. Thank you so much. Snap those last pictures with your principals and your, your administrators and all that stuff. We thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Green. Thank you.